Okay, uh, just before we go to the questions and answers, um, what I found is when I, when I put a little magic or mystery, it doesn't necessarily have to be magic, but mystery and, and puzzles into uh, teaching, uh, it became a lot more fun not only for me but for my students. And I started viewing the world around me more like a child might. Uh, you don't get too cool to be excited about things. I mean, I can still get excited about doing a water experiment or static electricity or electromagnetism. And I get excited enough and it seems to be contagious. The students get it as well. And even though I've received a lot of awards for, for teaching and some in magic, I think one of the uh, best rewards I've had is having students come back after years and years uh, of, of after graduation and saying that uh, some of my classes were their favorite and most memorable classes. And so, uh, of course, that gives me a, a very warm feeling inside and makes me feel that uh, putting out a sense of wonder is maybe a good thing. So uh, I'll conclude with that. And if we have any questions and answer or questions, I'll try to supply some answers. I will say one thing, though. There's one thing I don't answer, and that is how I do a, a particular trick, because then that uh, takes away that sense of wonder. And uh, so I'm very evasive when it comes to that sort of thing. But any other questions you might have? All right, so thank you very much, Lon Mandrake. Now, uh, as the format we're doing is a 40-minute lecture and then 10 minutes worth of Q&A, so if anyone has questions they would like to ask Lon, uh, unfortunately, I can't come to you. I need you to come to me. Lon, thanks so much on behalf of students. I know my grade uh, 12 teacher was, did some magic as well, Graham Best, and uh, I do remember that 30 years later. So thank you for being part of that movement, first of all. Um, the question I have is regarding uh, the demonstration that, you, that you've done. Um, is there anything uh, that you would do in terms of uh, a response to it? Would it be a discussion? Would it be a project? Would it be, uh, you know? Uh, yes, go, uh, uh, good point. Uh, when I do a, a magical demonstration in class, sometimes I'll do it strictly as entertainment, like if it's a Friday last period. But uh, m I usually try to, to uh, turn it into some kind of scientific uh, experiment. So for example, I might come out with a, a big jar of purple liquid, and I'll have four or five girls come up and four or five boys come up, and they'll pour the liquid into glasses. Every time a girl pours it, it turns pink and every time a boy turns, pours it, it turns green. Of course, that's a mystery, that's a surprise. The students aren't ready for that. So now I say, okay, what kind of hypotheses might you have? What kind of guesses? How do you think it's been done? And they'll come up with some ideas, and then the next step, of course, is can you design an experiment to test that idea? You know, they might say, well, may maybe, the, maybe the girls, are, we noticed the girls are pouring faster than the boys. Maybe it had something to do with the mixture, of, mixture with air. Or they might say, well, <clears throat> you know, maybe the girls are warmer than boys. Or maybe you had something secreted into the glass, uh, something invisible. Or, uh, anyway, so they, they come up with a lot of hypotheses. They're all good hypotheses. They show their thinking. And now I, I take them through the scientific method of coming up with a hypothesis, coming up with an experiment, and testing it. And uh, uh, the same thing can be taught in a very mundane way. Look, I've got some. Uh, uh, acid base indicator here. Notice if I pour it into an acid, it turns pink. If I tour, pour it into a base, it turns green. Now write that down and remember it for the test. I mean, when you get the whole class involved, it's much more memorable. And again, I've had people come back and they say they, they really enjoyed it and they learned a lot more about scientific method. With the water in the, uh, with the card, I take it a step further in the classroom. I'll take some, uh, uh, some cloth uh, with large holes in it, put it over the top, and say, well, it still worked now. And then, you know, we see if it does or not. And then, and then I had them design experiments, like use the cheesecloth on different sizes, uh, add salt to the water, does it still work? And so they come up with a number of, uh, of experiments. In other words, they become interested en enough to go home and start trying some experiments. And, you know, the scientific method is what's really missing from science education. There's so much information and we're learning information all the time, but the scientific method is what's fun about it. We have a question, how, how in the world did that happen? Wow, I, I didn't expect that to happen. For example, I didn't expect the water to fall out 
on, on uh, my assistant here. So I'm going to go home now that, and figure way. out what it is. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks so much, Lon. Appreciate it. I'm just uh, curious. Uh, you mentioned how you want to preserve sort of the wonder of your magic, um, but you also sort of lead your students to help uncover the answers in the classroom. I'm curious what your opinion is of people who purposely kind of give the impression that they actually have magic powers. People who perhaps cold readers like Sylvia Brown, for instance. Um, what's your take on that? Does it ever happen? Okay, where, where well, well uh, I feel that uh, one of the best things you can do in a case like that, because you know, if a person wants to believe, they're gonna believe no matter what. But, you know, in, in my